Hi and welcome to this quick review of activation energy and enthalpy profile diagrams. As always it's important to have your independent study notes and materials on this topic um, close to hand so you can use them during the course of the clip. Um, so if you don't have them with you you need to get hold of them now and then we can resume. So the clip will focus on how to construct an enthalpy profile diagram for a specific enthalpy change because you need to pay attention to the definition of that enthalpy change when you're actually drawing out your enthalpy profile diagram. So before we start, I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of quick definitions that you should ideally have on flashcards um, to understand what they mean. Um, but I'll make reference to these in passing throughout the course of the clip, so I'll leave them up there for you to use. So the first thing to think about is what does an enthalpy profile diagram look like? So in general terms, this is what the enthalpy profile diagrams for an exothermic and an endothermic reaction might look like. What's really important when you're drawing them is firstly that you make sure that your products um, are placed in the right part of the diagram uh, relative to the enthalpy axis, which is the y-axis, so the screen tells you which way around it should be. In each case, the arrow for delta H uh, must point in the right direction, therefore must point up if it's an endothermic reaction and down if it's an exothermic one, and start at the reactants and end at the products. You can see that the arrows actually touch the reactants and the products. And finally, the activation energy arrow should start at the reactants and reach the highest part of the curve. Okay, so let's have a little look at some examples. Now this enthalpy profile diagram is actually wrong for the standard enthalpy combu combustion of methane. I've given you the definition, so what I'd like you to do is pause the clip and think about how this needs to be improved. Now why don't you grab a piece of paper, or a whiteboard perhaps, and see if you can put the correct version on the piece of paper and the whiteboard. So hopefully you spotted that there was no CO2 in the products. Um, you wouldn't have to memorize this, but minus 890 kilojoules per mole of minus 1 does actually happen to be the correct value for delta HC, the standard enthalpy of uh, combustion of methane. So all we had to do really was put in um, CO2. Um, this is a fairly simple and straightforward change. Apart from that, it's, uh, it's fine. Uh, they've put the reactants in. The arrow for delta H is correctly placed. And the products are below the reactants on the enthalpy scale. It's just a, one small correction we had to do. So, what you need to remember is always check that your mole ratios for reactants and products match the actual enthalpy change you're drawing the diagram for. So one thing that people sometimes get a bit confused about is how to explain it in terms of bond breaking and bond making, which, as it happens, is something the examiners are aware of, so you won't be surprised to know that they'll want to ask you to, to do just that. So let's take a couple of moments to have a think about this. So what I've got is a diagram, a little bit like an enthalpy profile diagram, except we've actually illustrated the individual molecules. If we go back to the definition of activation energy. You can see that it specifically says that you've got to break bonds. And in our little graphic diagram it shows that bonds are being uh, broken. Okay, so if you have a look at it a bit more closely, you can see that if you take your starting products and you break all the bonds between the atoms, you'll actually end up with the individual atoms floating around. Now, they don't float around for very long because, as you know, atoms want to react with each other to share electrons to complete their outer shell. So what very quickly happens is that those atoms will rearrange themselves to form the products. Now, you can see that the bonds in the products are different bonds to the ones in the reactants, but what we're talking about here is the energy change. So bonds are broken in the reactants, which takes in energy, and then bonds are made in the products, which gives out energy. So how do we put this into words? What you need to write is the energy taken in during the breaking of bonds 
is less than the energy given out during the making of buns. So that means that the excess energy that's left over after the reaction has happened is released. So the reaction is exothermic. Even though some energy is taken in to start with to break the bonds, there is more energy than that given out at the end. So therefore that difference is the energy given out. So if we go back to our enthalpy profile diagram, that's our delta H. So what happens when the reaction is endothermic? The explanation has to be adjusted slightly. So this time, see if you can put something together to explain what's happening with an endothermic reaction. Pause the clip, grab a piece of paper or a whiteboard, and see what you can come up with, and then resume to see if we're in agreement. So hopefully you came up with something similar to that. The energy taken in during bond breaking is greater than the energy given out during bond making. There's an easy way to remember this. And you may have come across it before, bendel mexel Breaking is endothermic, making is exothermic. So bond breaking is endothermic, bond making is exothermic. So before we wrap this up, let's have a look at another reaction and see if we can apply this idea across. So here's something that they might ask you in an exam. It says, explain using ideas about structure, bond making and bond breaking why the decomposition of solid calcium carbonate is endothermic. Now looking at the question, uh, don't forget they've asked you about structure as well as bond making and bond breaking, so it's actually two separate parts of the course that they're asking about it in this question. Pause the clip and see if you can scribble something down before we come back and have a look at what we agree on. So the first thing I'd say is that uh, many strong electrostatic attractions between calcium 2 plus and carbonate ions require energy to overcome. So, um, for bond breaking and bond making, the energy taken in by bond breaking in the CaCO3 lattice exceeds the energy released during the making of ionic bonds within the calcium oxide lattice and the covalent bonds in CO2. And just before we finish off, I'd like to draw your attention to how the language was adapted and made more specific. Why did I do this? There were five marks on offer, so I was trying to put as much specific language in as I could without waffling. So not just saying energy taken by bond breaking exceeds the energy released during bond making. I tried to talk a little bit about the structure, the lattice, the types of bonds that were present. OK, that takes us just about to the end of this review of activation energy and enthalpy profile diagrams. Hopefully it's been reasonably useful. There's been a few tips shared and you can go and try some examples now with a bit more confidence. So um, until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.